Hey, in this video, I'll try to give you a little bit of insight into the measurement of E by M ratio that we have previously discussed. Now, this video is completely optional for you. It's not necessary for you at this juncture for you to understand the measurement of E by M ratio the way JJ Thompson did it because it involves a little bit, a little bit of use of magnetic field and a little bit of background as to how magnetic field exert force on a moving charge. This is something that you study in physics when you move on to class 12th. So at this point of time, it may be something which you are studying ahead of time. But, but if you have a little bit of background in magnetic field, then you start continue listening to it. Otherwise, you can very safely move on to the next video of JJ Thompson's model of atomic structure. Now, I believe at this juncture, either you must be side by side studying projectile motion in physics or you might have already studied it. So you must have come across a situation like this when suppose it's a hill and there's a boy standing on the top of the hill and he throws a ball horizontally with a velocity v and the height of the hill is given as h. The boy, the, the, the ball does projectile motion and it falls on the ground and you have to find the distance between the point at which it falls on the ground from the foot of the hill. This distance, suppose I call it r. You have to find this r. Now this is easy stuff. You must have come across a situation like this and it's easy to solve. Now I'm drawing an analogy to this situation. What's happening is this electron in the cathode ray has come to this point. The point to which it just enters between these two electrodes. Okay. And I have done certain arrangement that the velocity ceases to increase beyond this point. So whatever velocity it has acquired up till this point, it will have that velocity. And after beyond that, it will move with that constant velocity. So it is just like this. The boy has thrown it with horizontal velocity v and it remains unchanged throughout the motion. The same thing is going to happen here. Here, gravity, the earth was pulling it downward. Similarly, in this case, the force between these two cathode will pull this electron downward. So it is analogous situation. Now, in this case, how do you find this r? Because if you are able to find this r, then you will be able to find this r. Isn't it? Let me call this as L. So if you are able to find this R, you are able to find this L. How do you find this R? You find this R as velocity into time. This is distance. Velocity, horizontal velocity remains constant. All you have to do is find out the time. And time, you know, is root over 2h upon g. So in this case, if you know the velocity, then you can easily find out L. How do you know the velocity? See, this electron comes, suppose it's begin its journey from this point, then it is accelerated by electric force. The electric force exists between the two electrodes and that force accelerates the electron. So the velocity keeps on increasing. Now at this point, I said, I have done some arrangement that velocity ceases to increase. Then what would I have, what I would have done actually? I would have balanced the electric force by some other force. The velocity was increasing due to electric force. Now, if electric force is balanced, then the velocity won't increase. The force, electric force is in this direction. Let me represent it as Fe. Now, if this force can be balanced somehow in opposite direction, if I apply some other force, that force will be magnetic force. Then the net force on this electron becomes zero. So the velocity won't increase any further. Okay. Now I have to know the velocity at this point. See the force electric force on any object is its charge into the value of electric field. Now this is the very basic. For example, you find gravitational force mass M times G. This gives you gravitational force. Similarly, electric force is charged into electric field and magnetic force on a moving charge is Q into V into B. If velocity and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other, then the magnetic force is Q into V into B. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to balance the electric force and magnetic force. If we balance the electric force and magnetic force, then electric force will be equal to magnetic force. The magnitude will be equal. Now, from here, we can find the velocity. Velocity will come out as E upon B. Now, 
basically in uh, physics the value of electric field and magnetic field are known they are easy to measure it is known the electric field that we are applying will be known the magnetic field that we are applying will be known so the velocity at which it gets balanced will also be known so the velocity at this point will be e upon b the electric field that has been applied upon magnetic field that has been applied so velocity is known okay this is how we know the velocity now velocity is known and the time to fall down have to be known the time to fall down is root over 2h upon g and what is g g is actually mg upon m what is mg mg is gravitational force so here the analogous quantity of g would be here gravity is pulling down the ball downward here electric field is pulling down the ball downward so the quantity analogous to g would be electric force upon m and what is electric force so analogous quantity of g g dash would be electric force electric force is q into e upon m fine so the distance we can measure this l can be measured physically so this distance l would be l would be equal to velocity velocity is known how much is it e upon b into time time is root over 2h now this h can also be measured physically this is known upon g and g is electric force upon m so q into e into m upon m m m, m will go in numerator so this is known so here see length can be physically measured electric field and magnetic field we know h height can be physically measured mass m is not known mass of this particle is not known and charge of this particle is not known everything else can be either physically measured or we know the value of electric field and magnetic field so from this equation actually we can find out q by m or if i replace q by e then e by m can be calculated as 2he upon p square l it's easy to see that q by m can be calculated and this is how actually jj thomson calculated charge by mass ratio now as you can see you can get at best e by m you cannot get e or m individually on this particle that's why jj thomson could not calculate using this experimental setup individually the value of charge on the particle and the mass of the particle so this is how he did e by m and it's really interesting once you and if if you did not get it at this point once you study magnetic field then you revisit this scenario and try to find out the e by m ratio given the given the other parameters